best trumpet player this college ever had. Let's get closer. I thought you'd like the music. I was just saying the other day, I ought to see more of old Stu. Well, uh, we better go sit down or something, Ellen. See you later. Your playing was wonderful. Thanks. You don't think she meant you, do you? You don't think she meant you, do you? Wait a minute. You don't think she'd fall for that station house music of yours? Listen, it's not so much my music, it's my personality. I'll show you. <laughs> Hello, Stu. Oh, Mr. O'Neill, won't you join us? Oh, thank you. See you later, son. Well, Stu, do you want something? Me? No, no, no. I've been wanting to meet you for some time, Mr. O'Neill. Well, that's wonderful. You mean you like the band? Oh, I didn't mean that I wanted to meet the band exactly, although I thought they did back you up rather well. Thanks. Is there any special number you'd like to hear? I would like to hear the Call Me Up and Call Me Down Blues. The what? The Call Me Up and Call Me Down Blues. Oh, I, I know what you mean. I'm afraid I haven't got the number. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to get a hold of it. Why don't you go back to the bandstand and look for it? Oh, no hurry, Stu. It's such a long time since you and I have got together, I, I want to make the most of it. It's heartwarming, that's what it is. Nothing like old college friends, I always say. <laughs> all for one, and, and all for one. <laughs> yes, sir. I think I better be getting back. So long, Stu. So long. All right, boys, number nine. Why can't you go on a picnic? Mr. Dunn is inside, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Dunn? Mr. Dunn wouldn't be any fun on a picnic. Look, this is a collection agency, not an escort bureau. Now, will you please get off my desk? Is this fellow annoying you, Miss Miller? Hello. Hello. Well, I 
Just seeing Miss Miller here about the encyclopedias. See, I figure I can take care of the details. As Miss Miller was kind enough to serve me with the summons, I'll explain the details. What is there to explain? Seven years ago, you bought a set of encyclopedias for which you've never paid. But I didn't buy them. Please, you're wasting my time. See that, Danny? You're wasting Miss Miller's time. As I was saying, seven years ago, I must have broken a mirror because that walked in and became my roommate. I was only a simple freshman at the time. What are you now, a simple sophomore? Oh, now, Miss Miller, you're being a bit unkind. After all, we've worked hard to stay in college this long. He's right. Now, it's not easy for a couple of bright guys like us to go on flunking year after year. <laughs> what in the world are you talking about? Well, it's like this. You see, as long as we can stay in college, the band makes us a very comfortable living. That's right. Five, six thousand dollars a year. Now, that's more you can make on Wall Street. Besides, it's a nice life. Cultural, relaxing, gay. But getting back to the subject. This roommate, whom I trusted implicitly, ordered a set of encyclopedias in my name. That's gratitude. It was a birthday present. You were crazy about him. I was crazy about him until I got the bill. What's this? Mr. O'Neill, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Dunn. Oh, yes. Oh, yes! Step right in. Now, look, Mr. Dunn, here's the situation. We're temporarily embarrassed. See, we're working our way through college. Just here. college kids, you know. You've been working your way through college for the last seven years. Well, now, it takes time. Especially when you're struggling. Boys, you don't pull any wool over me. You ain't broke. You ain't struggling. You mean you doubt our word? You said it. I've got your number. You're a businessman. Now, pay up or go to jail. That's final. Final, eh? Final. Final! Well, uh, maybe we ought to ask for an extension. Yeah. Hit it. Okay, okay Dunsey boy. We do make money. That's it. We haven't got any right Just now. Just give us one month. Just one month's extension. Okay, Dunsey. I won't it. listen. I will be around. What do you think years? we are? Fly by night. My word is as good as my that, doesn't he? Dunsey Everybody Dunsey in town boy. Knows Have that is. money here tomorrow. I'll see you in court. No. No. That's a sordid little fellow, isn't he? <laughs> sordid little place. Must be a sordid life for such a lovely girl. Well, there's nothing so sordid about it, except the people we deal with. It's a pity we can't take Miss Miller out of this. Yes, how'd you like some fresh air? Sorry. I have work to do. <sighs> She's very businesslike, isn't she? <laughs> I like that in a secretary. In fact, I'd like to have a secretary like that. You know, there's an awful lot of work running a band. Come to think of it, we do need a secretary. But I don't need a job. So she doesn't need a job. Huh? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, I won't do it. Now, I want to tell you... Look, Mr. Dunn, I want to do the right thing. We don't care anything about the encyclopedia company. No, we care about you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well... Well, maybe I said a few hasty words, boys. Uh, let bygones be bygones, eh? Two dollars. But the bill's 110. That's for you to fix things up. What are you talking about? Are you asking me to take a bribe? A two dollar bribe? Oh, now, come, come, Don. We're all men of the world, you know. We'll keep it on our hands. Don't sure. worry. Oh, you can depend on us. She'll tell you. She? Who? Miss Miller. Miss Miller. Miss, Miss Miller! Come in here, please. Did you intimate to these gents that I could be bribed? She didn't say you could be bribed. She said you could be fixed. Why, Mr. Dunn, I didn't say any such thing. Oh, oh you hear that? yes, you did. Of course, you did, Miss Miller. She didn't want us to tell you. Don't believe me, Mr. Dunn. Well, Miss Miller, I, I heard you myself. Like didn't you hear it? I did. We both heard it. We both heard it. Wait a minute. I'll have you dead beats put in jail, and it's for you, Miss Miller. You are fired. Oh. Thanks a lot, old man. Thanks a lot. Miss Miller. Miss Miller. Miss Miller. Miss Miller. Miss Miller. Wait a minute. Haven't you Rover boys caused enough trouble already? It was really a kindly gesture. A very kindly gesture. Now I haven't even a reference. But I don't demand a reference. We know you're for what you are. Yeah. You mean you really want me to work for you? Sure. Wouldn't you like to? What's your salary? Eighteen a week. He'll double it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well. Hit it. Now, Let me Ms. tell you. Here's the chance of a life. That we're going to offer you the greatest opportunity you've ever had in your life. We're going to take you out of the day. All right. Most... I'll take it. Good. Good. When Talking. do I start? Right now. Well, now that I'm working for you, I'll tell you something. Dunn can be bought, but his price isn't $2. It's $10. Here, yeah, you want to take care of the details. Hey. Well, here we are. You can have half that desk, quarter of that rack, and just 
Go to work. There's only one detail that you've omitted. What are my duties? Oh, you type a little. Telephone a little. Keep the leader happy. Keep your eye on the brass section. I thought you said this was a job. Oh, lining up good engagements is no cinch. What's so difficult about it? Operator, get me the Riverdale Country Club. Oh, no, oh, no, you can't it's get that day. We've already tried. Who's in charge there? Uh, Mr. Bent, isn't it? Bent? A real sourpuss. Hello, Mr. Bent? This is Mr. O'Neill's secretary. No, Mr. Danny O'Neill, the orchestra leader. I read in the paper that you're planning a Halloween dance. Bob Harvey's Cornell Clippers. Oh, but we entertain, too. Do we entertain? No, but we can dream up something. Oh, our entertainment's terrific. That's our strong point. Mr. Bent, until you've seen the perennials, you haven't lived. Oh, it isn't that I don't admire Emil Coleman, but isn't his music a little, shall we say, rowdy? <laughs> now, Mr. O'Neill's Salon Ensemble play everything gently but with a lilt, and all his boys are from such nice families. Very well. We'll expect them at 7.30. Thank you. Believe me, Bud, my outfit are killers. Just what you need for one-nighters. Can they pack him in like Dorsey? Solid, Jack. Murder. Furthermore, I could come down the day before the dance and help you with the decorations. That is, of course, if you want me to. Well, 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 wait a minute, Ben. We took a poll on the campus and almost everybody voted for Artie Shaw's band. Artie Shaw? Who's Artie Shaw? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. A glass of water, please. Yes, sir. Now, what about that prom? Is it set? Not exactly, Chief. They hired that college band. Danny O'Neill's perennials. O'Neill again, huh? This is the fourth time we've run into them on college dates. Either they got a great band or a fine manager. I gotta go up and hear them sometime. Well, I wouldn't worry about them, Chief. They'll be graduating in another week. Hmm. Not the perennials. It's okay, boys. Okay. No graduation this year. I flunked three courses. Thank you. Oh, Danny, you're wonderful. Oh, well, Danny, old boy, we made it again, huh? Uh, what's the matter? Well, Hank, I... I don't quite know how to tell you. What do you mean, I passed? Oh, listen, I, I couldn't graduate. Not with my marks. What, are you kidding me? Oh, listen, there, there must be some mistake. I, I'm not gonna take this lying down. I'm gonna see the dean about it. They can't do this to me. Oh, Danny. Poor old Hank, he got careless. You didn't have anything to do with this, did you? Why, Ellen. Of course, a little peace and quiet won't hurt either of us. But poor Hank. You still have me. I guess we'll just have to carry on as good old Hank would have wanted us to. It seems to me... It seems to you... I said, it seems to me. You said, it seems to you. Seems to me I smell a mouse. Somewhere about the house. It seems to me. It seems to you. I said, it seems to me. You said it seems to you. That such an embarrassing situation calls for concentration. Do you dig me, Jack? We, we dig you, Jack. Can
can you think of a plan? We solid again. To get me out of this mess? Uh, yes, yes, yes. We'll, we'll start, start the music and play it back. Solid Jack. Solid Jack. Can you sing and dance? I'll take a chance. Are your boots on right? I got them laced up tight. Is Miss Miller a killer? From a Spanish villa. Is her dancing mellow? Why, mellow as a cello. Then it seems to me I'll be asleep. Want to go right into your curtsy curry? What will it be? Don't look at me. Now let me see. What will it be? I never could do the conga. Could never get through the conga. But if you say do the conga, I ain't hep to that step, but I'll dig it. I never could see mazurkas. They're poison to me, mazurkas. But if it's to be mazurkas, I ain't hep to that step, but I'll dig it. When they invented the Charleston, he was a total flop. Right. But say, if you want a Charleston, I'll never stop or dance till I drop. Yeah. I never could dig the polka, the corniest jig, the polka. But if you say dig the polka, I ain't hep to that step, but I'll dig it. Hey, hey, Anywhere with the dean? No. Seems that article I wrote on the decline of the harpsichord and her sister instruments was what really put me across. Is that so? Yeah. You know, it's a funny thing. I don't even remember writing that article. <laughs> and yet the dean said it was so good he couldn't possibly think of flunking me. Tough luck. Yeah. Cheer up, boy. It's probably all for the best. <laughs> Say, what do you got there? What's that? What's that? Cyclopedia. Oh. Thank you, but Hank, you'll go into your father's textile business, a cog in a great industry, stamping your personality on miles and miles of tweed, making the wheels turn, punching the clock, listening to the song of the looms. What volume is that? It's, uh, ham to ilk. Why? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Music wasn't for you, Hank. You could never have got anywhere with that beat-up trumpet of yours. Your medium is textiles. Your father was a textile man, so was his father before him. Why, you've got wool in your blood, Hank. What's the bookmark for? Oh, it's, a, it's an article there. Rather interested the dean. 
Yes, you know, a uh, funny thing about that article, it's almost identical with my thesis. Hmm. Interesting coincidence. Yeah, that's what the dean thought. Hmm. You know, I had quite a time trying to persuade him that the marginal notes weren't mine. As a matter of fact, I tried to convince him that the handwriting wasn't yours. Yeah? Yeah. What'd he say? He said you were fired. You dog. Ah, oh, take it easy, Danny. You low, conniving dog. You two will have to face the world, fall right into your father's concrete. You'll be a cog within a cog. You can't get away from it, Danny, my boy. You got concrete in your bones. We'll be in town Saturday. We'd like to look over your outfit. Artie Shaw. Well, you know. hey, well, there it is. That's it. Shaw wants to look me over. Look you over. Look us over. All right, us. Huh. Seems to be in a kind of a rush about it. I wonder how soon he want me to start. Hey, it didn't take him long to find out that I'd be available, did it? You'll be available indefinitely, I'm afraid. Yeah, now then, first thing tomorrow, I must find Ellen a new job. Don't bother. As soon as I get set, I'll send for you. Oh, that's very kind of you. All right, now, come on, let's get organized. Call the boys and tell them to be there early. Summer uniforms, and you, you go home and run your scales. Come on. Look, brother, don't bury it. I'll be out in a few minutes. Are you sure? He's here. Good. Thanks. Hey. What about the buck you promised me? All right, all right. Beat it. Okay, gang. Sweet Sue. Hank. Sure. He's coming in now. Well, thanks, Pat. Come on, give out. I'll bring you some change. Now, a nice, easy background on this one, boys. Hey, Danny, why don't you lay out this one? Save your lip till Shaw comes. I'll take the lead. Are you kidding? I'm okay. I've been in the woodshed. You've been in the cornfield. All right, boys. One, two. Straight salary or percentage? What a percentage. Hmm, smart, huh? Thanks again, Mr. Shaw. Where's Mr. Miller? Mr. Miller? Yeah, the manager of the band. Oh, that Mr. Miller. There she is. This is Mr. Shaw, Mr. Miller. I mean, uh... We've been expecting you, Mr. Shaw. Well, if you're not too busy, I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. Fine. I'd like to, but I'm on my way down to Trenton to play a date. Anyway, it was nice talking. Thanks, and good night. Good night. Thanks. No trouble. Where is he? He's gone. Gone? Where's Shaw? What did he say? He's gone. You ruined it. What are you talking about? I was terrific. Oh. When do I start? Take ten, son. What was his proposition? Well, his proposition rather surprised me. Oh, uh, quibbled about salary, huh? Wait a minute, I don't work on Sundays. Look, Ellen, what gives? When do I start? You don't. 
Juan? Well, then what did he want? Me. Good girl, and don't talk to any strange man. I won't, and then I'll see you in New York? I yes, so. No. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, Portland's a long way from New York, and concrete kind of holds a man down. Well, you'll be there, Hank. No, as a matter of fact, I've got to pay a lot of attention to those mills in Fall River. Oh, I won't be seeing either of you? No. Well, I'm afraid not. Oh, oh goodbye, you idiot. Look out for her orchids. <laughs> goodbye. Start for Portland. Right. When do you leave for Fall River? Mm, oh, about an hour. I'll see you off. No, don't bother. You got to pack. Yeah. Well, this is it. Right. So long, Danny. So long, kid. It's been a lot of fun. You bet it has. Now take care of yourself. I'll drop your line. Do that. that this was an important affair. Oh, it is. Oh, well, in that case, I know you'll want Mr. Shaw. That's fine, thank you. Couple of relatives. Well, what's cooking, Ellen? We closed the Atlantic City job on our own terms. Oh, that's swell. And the intercollegiate prom. Mm, not a bad two days' work. Looks like my hunch about you was pretty good. I'm glad. Mr. Shaw, I... I wonder if I could ask you a favor. Of course. It's, a, it's about a couple of trumpet players. Oh, well, you see, I always pick my own men, Ellen, and I don't... Of course, but all I want to do is to hear these boys. They're marvelous. Well, where are they, around town? Practically. One's in Portland and the other's in Fall River, but they could be here in a jiffy. Isn't that a lot of traveling just for an audition? Oh, but they wouldn't mind. And once you hear them, you know what I mean. Well, if you think they're that good, I'll listen to them. Thank you. Not at all. Call the Western Union boy to pick up two telegrams. Thank you. What floor is Artie Shaw on? 17th. Going up. Come over, buddy. What floor is Artie Shaw on? 17th. Aren't you going to Fall River the hard way? I suppose this elevator stops at Portland. No, sir, the last stop is the 22nd floor. So you were going to give a lot of time to the mill. Listen, I got as much right here as you have. Why don't you face facts, Hank? Ellen's not even established yet. She can't possibly get us both in the band. I'm going to get a tryout with Artie Shaw. I have to tear down this building floor by floor. 17th floor, next. Here's a present for you, Sam. Have one on me, Sam. Where's Artie Shaw's office, please? Right that way. Oh, thanks. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Taylor, Taylor, see Ms. Miller, Miller, please. Miller's very busy right now. Hey, is that a three Well, she'll see five. me. She'll see me out. We went to the same college, college together. Hey, is that 34 or 54 Highcroft Road? 34. Hey, wait a minute. What do you got there? Why, oh, this is for me. Yeah. Yeah. Hank, Shaw's sending for me. Me too. You know, I knew he'd get around to that sooner or later. <laughs> Any answers? We'll take care of the answers, bud. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. It's all right. What do you make of this? Look at that Fall River. Say. 
Excuse me. Something funny about this. Yeah. He walked out on us at the prom, didn't he? Yeah. You don't suppose it was deliberate? Why would he? You mean he wanted us to cool our heels for a while so we'd work for peanuts? Listen, we're not that hard to get. No, but then he got Ellen down here as a decoy, thinking we'd work for nothing on account of her. That's it? How do you like it? I don't like it. He can't treat a friend of ours like that. No, sir. I'll fix him. Just for that, I'm going to ask for $25 a week more. Fifty. Young lady, you can tell Shaw that we'll see him. Mr. Shaw, it's very different. Never mind, we'll tell him. Thanks. Come on, Hank. Hey, wait a minute. Hi, Shaw. Now, uh, just a minute, fellas. You'll have to wait outside. I'm the new trumpet player you just sent for. Yeah, me, too. We just got your wire. What? What? Oh, yeah. Well, you certainly took your time getting here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a couple of other offers to consider. Yeah. All right, boys. I'll tell you what you do. Drop down to the hotel tonight and play a couple of tunes at the band. Huh? That'll be swell. I'd love to. See you then. I'm sorry I'm pretty busy now. Oh, well, that's all right. Which is Miss Miller's office? Right across the hall. <laughs> well, thanks. I think I'll have a little talk with her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Artie. <laughs> Ellen! Danny! I can't believe my eyes. Oh, it's so good to see you. Kind of surprised you, huh? Kind of surprised you, huh? And Hank, wherever did you come from? Artie Shaw's office. We were just talking a little business. But Portland. Portland's loss is your gain. And Fall River? Fall River will have to suffer, too. Did Artie say anything about giving you a tryout? Oh, sure. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. Yes, but we haven't promised him anything yet. Good evening, Cap. I'm the new trumpet player with Artie Shaw. I ain't never seen you before. It's all right. You're going to see plenty of me from now on. Oh, by the way, if my brother happens to drop around here tonight, tell him that Shaw's not giving any more auditions, see? If he makes a fuss, just throw him out. You know how these little family jealousies are. Thanks. What's your name? Danny O... O. Taylor. I'm so glad you got here early. I was lonesome. I haven't seen you since late this afternoon. <laughs> Not a bad house. How long are we booked here for? You're only booked for one number. This audition? Mere formality. Where's Hank? Hank? How do I know? Am I my brother's keeper? I thought he was coming with you. He probably got cold feet. Couldn't face the humiliation of being turned down. Poor boy. I wish I could do something to help him. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, now, Ellen, I'm very fond of Hank. After all, he did bring us together. If it hadn't been for those encyclopedias, I might never have met you. I'll always be grateful to him for that. Won't you? Danny, this is no time Yes, it to... is. This is just the time. Yesterday, what was I? A carefree schoolboy. Today, what? A man with his career assured. A man with plans for the future. <laughs> Danny, don't you think you ought to be warming up? I've been warmed up a long time. <laughs> Ellen. Shall I take the vocal? Would you like to be the love of my life? For always and always Watch over me To square my blunders And share my dreams One day with caviar Next day, a chocolate bar. Would you like to take the merry-go-round? I'll need you. I need you. Just wait till you see. I hope in your horoscope there is room for a dog who adores you. That would make the only dream of my life come true for the love of my life in you. Ellen. So 
I'm your brother, huh? I was afraid you wouldn't make it. You shouldn't worry about me, Brother Danny. Ellen, I think you better leave. No, no, stick around. What happened, Hank? Brother Danny here framed me with a doorman. All I wanted was to be alone with you for once. See that? He admits the whole thing. Oh, now, wait a minute. You know that doorman hit me in the lip? He did? Yeah. Oh, that's true. How'd you bad. like to even it up, oh, huh? No, wait How'd you oh, like no. that? No, boys, please, you have to go on in a minute. You're putting me in an awful position. Now, come on, let's forget it. I'll tell Artie you're here. Good luck, darlings. <laughs> darlings. boys on the next set, but first give me a hand with that character over there. He's been here ten nights in a row. He's an awful ear bend. <laughs> well, well. Mr. Chisholm, this is Miss Miller. How do you do, Miss Miller? Well, sir, that last number jumped for you? Oh, very peppy. Very peppy indeed. By the way, what chord did we finish on? Uh, B flat. Sure, I missed it again. Won't you two join me? I'm sorry I've got to get back and play the next number, but Miss Miller can tell you all about the band. Is Miss Miller hep, as you boys say? Hep as they come. Fascinating, your swing jargon. I'm becoming hep to it myself. Well, see you later, Mr. Chisholm. So long, Gate. That's short for alligator. Please be seated. Are you a musician, Mr. Chisholm? Oh, I should have been, but I was forced to give it up. I said music, and Father said bottle caps. Father won. Oh, what a pity. I take it that the banjo is your instrument. Oh, no, the mandolin, the flat-back mandolin. All right, boys, you're on. What do you want to play? Uh, how about I'm yours? That's a pretty tough arrangement to play at sight. I'll play anything that's on the paper. Okay. How about you? Pick one. All right, I'll leave the book with you. Look them over. Oh, Artie, on the question of who plays first, may I suggest alphabetical order in the interest of fairness? Sure, okay. All right, we're on in about three minutes. What's the matter? Aren't you going to look over your part? I couldn't hit a bad note if I tried. Not tonight. Why is tonight an exception? Oh, I don't know. It makes all the difference in the world when you know there's someone depending on you. What? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. Who's depending on you? <sighs> Nobody. Forget it, Hank. Forget it. Say, you were alone here with Ellen when I came in for almost the first time since I've known her. Yeah? Well, what happened? What'd you say to her? Look, Hank, Ellen and I, I don't suppose it's any concern of yours, but when I get set with Shaw, Ellen and I... You proposed to her. What'd she say? She just looked up at me and gave me her tender, unspoken yes. How do you know it wasn't an unspoken no? Thought I could tell. It was one of those rare occasions when silence was more eloquent than words. Yeah? Yeah. All right. That's the way it is. Wish you all the happiness in the world. Have me over for dinner sometime. Thanks, Hank. All right. I'm glad you're not going to let this come between us.
just dandy. I'll be sure and call you. And meanwhile, if anything else comes up, take it. You sure you know what you're doing? Say the word. Okay, fellas, here we go. One, two. See what I mean? I didn't get music in my feet. Perennials. Never heard of him. Have you heard of Artie Shaw? Oh, were you associated with him? Associated with him? Why, I made a deeper impression on him than any trumpet player he ever heard. One moment, please. <laughs> Artie, there was one thing about last night. Maybe I shouldn't bring now, it up. Now, wait a minute. If it's about those same No, no, two... no. No, it was about Mr. Chisholm. <laughs> no, I mean... Yeah? Who? Him? You kidding? Well, throw him out. Anything serious? Ah. Out. All right. Hello. Tell Tommy that Hank Taylor's here, will you? Get off the desk. Huh? All right. Of course, Mr. Chisholm talks a lot, but he's sweet. He says he has the soul of an artist, but that his money's stifling it. Now, you've always wanted to give a concert. I know I can get him to back you. How do I know he's any different from those crunchy, crinkled breakfast food guys? They've all got some angle. All right, I'll guarantee to get him without one string attached. No musts about what I should play? None. No bottle cap ads? On a bright. Okay, sounds swell if you can do it. Good. I'll get to work on it right away. Yeah? What? Him! Throw him out! All right. Now, wait a minute. I got offers from Miller, Dutz, and Goodman. I got plenty of jobs. Don't say I didn't give you a chance. I think I'll put a small wager on Magic Melody. Oh, Lester, you're wonderful. Always willing to back something musical. Artists need a man like you. You think so? hunting song, I believe. <coughs> My dear, are you choking? <coughs> this place is one of my finds. They're all real musicians. It's too bad they're not better known. Well, and do you remember what you said that I might be able to help? Why can't I give these musicians to the world? Oh, but your first duty is to the American artist. Oh, yes, so it is.
centuries of Slavic violence have gone into that dance. Good, was perfect. What a bubblish idol of of my life. Oči strasnia, tipi krasnia, avek pit borsht, kak ti robina, ninački rata, romanov kaviar, hršijski šokolad bar. Miles away, Black's like dreaming of some little girl on the steps of Russia. You can tell by his face he's loved and suffered. Always watch over me, or play a pick in the flock from the strings of your old ball like a. Oh, please take me home. I can't stand it. Da da for the love of my life is you. Hey, hey! I can't tell you how much I appreciate you letting me back this concert, Mr. Shaw. Not at all, not at all. And how grateful I am to you, Ellen, to think after all these years I'm back in my true medium. Uh, by the way, how much did you say I should arrange for? Uh, roughly 15,000. Well, wouldn't you say that 20 would be safer? After all, the name of J. Lester Chisholm must stand for nothing but the best. There she goes, there she goes, always thinking of me. I can't tell you what a jewel you have in this little girl. I'm finding out every day. And what an inspiration. You know, Mother actually thinks that every girl who is attracted to me is after the Chisholm money. Stay where you are. Don't move. You don't know what a picture you make there in the candlelight. Lester, you've brought your mandolin. For you. Oh, you shouldn't. Why not? Tonight's our night to celebrate, isn't it? I thought we might have a quiet evening of music. Just you and I, alone. I always say there's nothing like duets to make a home a home. Can I use your house phone, please? Certainly. Thank you. Who do you wish to speak to? Miss Miller. Who's calling? Mr. Uh, Dunn. Oh, Mr. Dunn. Hello? Hello, Ellen. It's me, Danny. I've been trying to get in touch with you. I'm downstairs, and I thought maybe I could... No, I, uh, I can't see you tonight. No, no, I'm not being vindictive. I, I, I just can't see you. T of course Hank isn't here. Look, Danny, I'll have to talk to you tomorrow. No, he isn't. Ellen, wait a minute. Good night, Mr. Dunn. Uh, good night. Mr. Dunn. That was just an old college friend I was talking to. We won't be disturbed again, Lester. Shall we continue while we're in the groove?
was that? B flat? No, I heard a noise. Is there someone in there? Hardly. That's my bedroom. Now, don't be nervous. <laughs> I'm not a bit nervous. See? Just as I told you, it's your imagination. right under here as you have. Yeah. Say, if you're in here, I wonder who's out there. That's right. I thought it was you. Better investigate. No, wait a minute. We don't want to upset Alan today of all days. That's right, not today. So that's why you came up. I thought so. What are you talking about? I suppose you just happened to call the day that Shaw announced his concert. I read something about the concert in the paper. But I'm much too busy to help Artie out. I'm working like a horse. You're working? Sure. Not with Dorsey? No, no. He wouldn't change his style to suit me. I've got a little engagement just out of town. I never had such a big audience. Fourth trumpet, huh? No, sir, boy. Strictly solo stuff. Why, is the concert the reason for your visit? Who, me? Yeah. No, I'm much too busy for that. Doing See, what? After I quit Whiteman. You quit Whiteman? Sure. Too big a band for me. If I'd have stayed with him, I'd have lost my individuality. Same thing happened to Bix. So you're unemployed, huh? No, not at all. I just hooked up with a terrific European outfit. I never dreamed such things could be done to music. Yeah. I wonder what's going on out there. Sounds like she's giving somebody an audition. I never heard of Shaw with a mandolin section. What about a breather? That's a wonderful idea. Sometimes it's a little tiring. Yes. Let's have a toast to the concert. You know, Ellen, you've made me feel like a boy again. Really, Nick? You've actually made me believe that money really isn't a handicap. That's what I want. I think after all these years, I have something to look forward to. Well, to our big night. To our big night. She's being taken advantage of. She seems to be liking it. I've seen that fellow before. Yeah. Where was it? At the Russian rest. The little bear. The little wolf. I saw him with her at the racetrack. We've got to get her out of this. What are we waiting for? You have another glass? Oh, I don't think I should. Well, you know best. That's what I admire about you, Ellen. You're so different from the other girls in this town. Oh, I can hardly believe that, Lester. You wouldn't. You're so innocent. You wouldn't believe the carryings on. Oh, I've been told things. What's that? Somebody out there. Oh, you're just imagining things again. No, look. What's that? He's not home, is he, Ellen? Who is it? Oh, uh, oh, it's uh, it, it's just a neighbor. He al always wants to borrow the lawnmower or something. Uh, excuse me. Danny, Danny, is it you? Is that guy here again? Pardon me, Mr. Uh, Chisholm. Oh, Chisholm, yes. Ellen told me about you. Yeah. I guess she's getting rid of him. Well, she better. You know, I told her flatly. I said it's either him or me. You know, I used to trust that guy. I went to college with him. I shared my room, my time, my troubles. But I won't share Ellen. You don't blame me, do you? I didn't know. I, I think I'd better be going. No, I didn't mean you. Stick around. Make yourself at home. If you need anything, no. let him at you. Oh, mercy. 
Danny, how dare you come up here? I'm glad I came up. I'm very glad. Well, I'm not, and you get off this roof this instant. Now, wait a minute. You need me, Ellen. What? Oh, I'm not blaming you for one moment, but... What are you talking about? He's not the kind of person to be around you. You don't know what you're getting into. Of course, it's not your fault. Hank and I both realize that. Hank, is he here, too? Yes, he's inside, taking care of the details. Good heavens. Oh, dear. Lester! Lester, wait a minute! Lester! Why didn't you tell me you were married? But I'm not married. Then who is that man? Oh, that was just Hank. Ellen, I can't believe it. You of all people. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, you mustn't be so upset. I'll send him away. Now, don't make it worse, Ellen. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I'm leaving for Cincinnati in the morning. Cincinnati? But what about the concert? Well, you can tell Mr. Shaw how much I appreciate the chance you gave me. Under the circumstances, I can't accept it. Oh, but Lester, you can't throw away your whole musical career. My musical career is over. Here. I'll never touch it again. Oh, he says, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mr. Chisholm. Poor Mr. Chisholm. Poor Mr. Chisholm. <clears throat> Played on the mandolin. But he couldn't win cause he tried to swing and he broke a string every time. <laughs> oh, he says, I better be going. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mr. Chisholm just couldn't what? dig the jive when he did arrive at the proper <laughs> note. He... Now, look, Ellen, now this is all for the best. What we did may have been a little drastic. It may seem a little brutal at first. But you'll thank us for it later. So, I'll thank you for it. I suppose that Artie will thank you for it, too. Artie? Uh, what do you mean, Artie? What's Artie got to do with Mr. Chisholm? Nothing, nothing in the world. He was only the backer of the concert. Oh. All right, let's go again. Shh. There we go. Let's just play it over a few times. Ellen, you've got to listen to me. There's only one thing I've got to do. Go in there and tell Artie that the concert is off. Then leave town by the first train I can get. Ellen, you can't. I'm awfully sorry about all this trouble. I wouldn't hurt you for the world. You know how I feel about you. Remember the other night, right here, when I took the vocal? I wasn't kidding. There's one part I remember. The merry-go-round I'll lead you? You weren't kidding. Oh, that's all over. The merry-go-round is out. No, Danny, it's too late. No, it isn't. Now, you just go in there and act as if nothing's happened, and I'll have Chisholm back here in an hour. What can you do? Don't worry about that. Just don't say anything to Shaw until I get back. What can I say? You can do it. Give me an hour. All right, Danny. One hour. That's right. <laughs> Hurry up, he's checking out. What 20,000? Oh, that 20,000. Send it back to Cincinnati. I'm going back there myself. On second thought, Joe, you just leave it where it is. You bounder, leave this room immediately. Mr. Chisholm, I brought you your mandolin. I won't listen. Leave this room. Now, take it easy, Chisholm. You're going to listen whether you want to or not. We've come to clear Ellen's name. I won't hear her name mentioned in my presence. Oh, now, don't say that, Mr. Chisholm. Who are you? I'm a man who wants to see justice done. All right, talk. No, I can't. Come clean. All right. Mr. Chisholm, I have a confession to make. I've never done this before in my life. I lied to you. Go on. All right. Ellen is innocent. Innocent? I saw with my own eyes. He framed her, deliberately. Impulsively. I am not Ellen's husband. I know that. What? Yep. Who are you? Me? Um, he's her, her, her brother, Hank. Brother? Aren't you ashamed? Yes. Why did you endeavor to create this false impression? I, I, I was trying to protect her. Here, this, now look here, Chisholm. wrong. We didn't know who you were. We didn't know how much you meant to her. Well, you're just about the most important man in her life. Right. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh, what have I done? You've acted shabbily. You have misjudged a wonderful girl. Jumped at brutal conclusions. Oh, dear, do you think she'd ever forgive me? Well, there's a chance, if you go about it in the right way. Yes, if you crawl back to her on your hands and knees, beg her to forgive and forget. Oh, I will. Oh, do you think this will interfere with letting me back the concert? Well, uh, I don't think so. No, Ellen isn't small. But you better hurry. Oh, I will. I'll get my hat and gloves. Uh, you make yourselves at home. Poor Mr. Chesley. Well, we've finally done right by our Ellen. It's about time. Yeah, it makes you feel good, doesn't it? You know, self-sacrifice, doing unto others. That's the life. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, but a little self-sacrifice goes a long way. We ought to think of our own careers for a change. After all, we are the intimate friends of Shaw's backer. Huh? No, but we, we mustn't use Chisholm. Uh -huh. We owe it to Ellen not to take any more chances. Uh, no, Ellen won't respect a couple of failures. It's true, if it wasn't for us, the concert would be off. Certainly. He owes us a break. Okay, go. Boys, if there's ever anything I can do. Nonsense, Mr. Chisholm. We're glad to do a good turn. If there's anything we can do for you. Oh, you've already done enough. Oh, I mean, like, uh, helping you select numbers for the concert and that sort of thing. You see, I don't select the numbers for the concert. Why, well, I hardly dare venture an opinion. Oh, but you should. After all, I'm only the backer. Only the backer? Why, Mr. Chisholm, you're the impresario, the most important man in the entire organization. You've got to be the guiding hand. Choose the music. Pick the men. It's your duty. Think of the other backers. You're letting them down. You're letting Shaw down. Well, this is terrible. Why didn't anyone ever tell me this before? Why, I would have been delighted to do it. It's not too late. Not if you work fast. I don't know just which way to start. What would you suggest? Well, first of all, uh, line up a number. Good idea, but offhand, I can't think. Oh, sure. You remember the uh, rolling back to Mammy on the Big River Blues? Rolling back to Mammy on the Big River Blues? That's it! He's got it! He's got it! Oh, don't be too hasty. Perhaps I can think of something better. What about a folk song? A folk song! I've got just the number for you. Listen to this. Da, 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 da. Oh, you're gonna like this, Chiz. This is Back to the Good Earth, full of sweet. Play that, Danny. What's it called? Hold down the bayou. You hear that? That's New Orleans. I visited there three weeks. I don't recognize it. You don't? Well, that's the spirit of New Orleans. I can almost smell the Delta. I can smell the Delta. Can't you smell the Delta? I have a slight cold. Well, nothing that your mandolin won't cure. Now you pick this up, Chiz. Pick it up, boy. Yeah, yeah. Come on, son. The train won't wait. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Now we're sailing up that river. Under Memphis, Chattanooga. Hold on, Chiz. Hear them steamboat whistles blowing? Tote that barge. Pull that bale. There's a cabin in the cotton. Solid south. A solid north. Solid jack. Solid jack. Right. Wagon wheels are creaking westward. Now we're rolling past that junction. On to Kansas, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, my hometown. His hometown, your hometown, everybody's hometown. Cincinnati. Boys, words fail me. I must see Shaw at once. That's the spirit, yeah. Chisholm. Whoa. Don't let America down. You sure it's my duty as a backer? You can do anything. Anything? Certainly. Well, all right. I'll not only see that this epic making number of yours has given the finest presentation in the world, but I'll go further. Yes? Well. I'll play in it myself, on my mandolin. What? A rhythm and letter B, I'll give you a downbeat and set the tempo. At C, trombones make a very definite entrance, saxes come in good and strong, and strings pick it up from there. Oh, Ellen. Can you ever forgive me? Oh, Lester. I know I don't deserve it. I've let you down in more ways than one. But I'm going to make up for it right now. Shaw, sure. can I see you a minute? Hi. Take ten, fellas. Hello, Mr. Chisholm. Glad you dropped in. I didn't just drop in, Mr. Shaw. Sit down, please. And you, Ellen. Oh, I realize I've shirked my duties, but I've got something to make up for. A folk song for the concert. It'll kill you. Folk song? It's got everything. The sweep of the prairies, creaking of wagons, the Mississippi. Sounds peachy. It goes like this. Da, 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 da. Hold down the bayou. Can't you smell the delta? <whistles> Chattanooga, Louisiana, solid north, solid south. Hold down, boy. Ooh, that's the steamboat whistle. That's my hometown. It's your hometown. Everybody's hometown. Cincinnati. Are you kidding? It'll sweep the country. I insist that you play it at the concert. Well, if that's the way you Wait feel minute, about it, you've been... Prairies, wagons, steamboat whistles. That's it, sweep. Listen, Artie, I've heard part of it, and it's not a bad song. How can I tell from that? Get me someone who can play it. I'll get you the composer himself. He's right outside. Right away. I fixed it. Good boy, Chiz. He's done a great job. Go in there and give him all you got. Right. Wait a minute. Uh, maybe we'd better explain about our secret. I could back you up on the mandolin. Uh, no, 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 save it. You don't want to give away the big surprise. No, practice comes first. Besides, you're no song plugger. Would Heifetz go around selling songs to band leaders? That's right. I'll stand by and explain it as you play it. Uh, uh no, we better stay out here, Cheers. You see, too many people might make Shaw nervous. Well, I might be needed. 
Come on down the lobby. I'll buy you a cigar. I don't like cigars. Don't you worry about it. I'll smoke it myself. Artie, he'll be here in a minute. I know, but I'm holding up a whole rehearsal, Ellen. Hello, Mr. Shaw. <laughs> oh, it's you again, huh? I guess so. Artie, you aren't going to let something that's over and done with stand in the way of a good song. Okay, let's hear it. This better be good. Yes, sir. Mr. Chisholm played on the mandolin, but he couldn't win cause he tried to swing and he broke a string every time. Poor Mr. Chisholm just couldn't dig the jive. When he did arrive at the proper note, he arrived by boat every time. He tried to jazz up his mandolin, but never could quite control it. He always brought Bach and Handel in. When he took a lick, he always broke a pick. Poor Mr. Chisholm, you're quite a gay old blade. With your serenade, but your corny jack bear the truck on back to the buke. Get a uke. You disgrace chalking on the mandolin every time. Did you like the tune, Artie? Kind of cute. Tell you what you do. Make an arrangement of it, and maybe we can find a spot for it. But remember, no trouble this time. Don't worry, Mr. Shaw. And thanks a lot. Mr. Chisholm playing a mandolin. That'd really be something. All right, Ben. Call the boys. I'm within the hour. Chisholm is back. I'm making an arrangement. You see, Ellen, I've settled down. The merry-go-round's out. Out nothing. You just happened to get the brass ring. <laughs> this is your big chance, Danny. I hope. Did he understand it? Did he call for it? Hook, line, and Cincinnati. Nice going, boy. Wonderful. Calls for a celebration. And a boy, Danny. Well, fellow artists, I'll give you the concert. We accept it. Lester, we're proud of you. Oh, come, come, Ellen. I'm only the backer. But that's a very important role, Lester. Well, it's not as though I was a real contributor, as though I wanted the performance. Well, <clears throat> now, look, uh, we just about killed this bottle. What kind of a host are you? How about a refill? Oh, excuse me. Of course, of course. Oh, uh, you won't tell her while I'm gone. Not a chance. Don't worry about it. Lester, wait a minute. Tell me what? Well, it's just a little surprise. All oh, let's tell her, fellas. I'm going to play in the concert. Lester, you're not. Well, I am. I knew you'd be delighted. What am I standing here for? Wine is what we need. Wine. So the merry-go-round's still on, huh? We couldn't help it. All we did was flatter him a bit. If we disillusioned him, he'd call the whole thing off. What do you suppose Shaw will do? Shaw will never find out. Hank's going to keep Chisholm away from him. Me? Oh, no. Oh, but I'll be busy with my arrangement. All right, I'll make a bargain with you. You get me a job with Shaw with a nice fat trumpet part, and I'll look after Chisholm. Oh, sure, I'll do my best. You'll do better than that, or else.
Well, we'll get it, Artie. Oh, it was wonderful, Artie. Glad you liked it. Here's my arrangement. Oh, fine. You make all the changes we talked about? Yeah, but I don't know how good it'll sound after that. Um, Artie, there's one little favor I want to ask you. You're going to use some extra trumpets. I know a fellow that... Oh, now, wait a minute. Not that partner of yours. A guy can't get through a number without falling off the stand. Nothing doing. Period. We'll run over this in the morning. Oh, Danny, what are we going to do about poor Hank? It's going to be tough, but we'll keep on trying. Honey, six. Eight, seven, two, three. Ninety-eight, two, three. Ninety-nine, two, three. And a hundred and stop. Other times without a slip. No, no. You were pretty fuzzy there on 37. You were a quarter of a beat off on 76. Now you take one more hundred and we'll turn it. No, no, it's just two days before the concert. I better go down and tell Artie our secret. No, not yet. It's too late tonight, anyhow. No, it isn't. The band's staying late to rehearse. You haven't practiced enough. I practiced for 10 days, 12 hours a day, six hours a night. I'll go stale. Are you ready? One. Two. Tonight at 8.30, Artie Shaw will present an interesting newcomer to the musical world. Interesting newcomer? That must mean me. Huh? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. What's the matter, Henry? You worried about the rehearsal? Me, no. Is it worrying you? Not at all. You know, there are very few troubles that a good night's sleep won't cure. Look, you watch your own health. I got insomnia. Insomnia? That's too bad. You should, uh... Come in. Good afternoon, Mr. Chisholm. Hello. Well, what about a drink? Good idea. I'll be right back. I just want to spruce up a bit. Hello. Give me the Majestic Theater, will you? Better so. What's that? Well, what about it? Yeah? Wait a minute. Excuse me, will you, Chiz? This is personal matter, you know? Say, Danny, you wouldn't lie to me at a time like this, would you? It's all set, I tell you. You're in. You gotta get down here right away. Well, this makes up for things, Danny. What, Chisholm? Wait a minute. Don't you worry about Chisholm. I just got a plan to keep him here. You bet. So long. Good news? Well, depends on your point of view. One man's drink is another man's poison. Yeah. Well, Henry, everything happens for the best. You know, it's always darkest just before dawn. That's right. The lad worthwhile is the lad who can smile when the rest of the world's gone wrong. Right, right as rain. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll have it over here. Henry, if ever anything comes between us, always remember I had your best interest at heart. That cuts both ways, partner. Well, happy days. Happy dreams. Bottoms up. Hank anywhere. Ellen, I don't suppose you'll ever believe I didn't have anything to do with this. Last week, I'd been sure you had. But this week, no. You know, you're improving so amazingly, Danny. I think I'll make you my manager. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a little blues number, which recently came to my attention bearing the somewhat ambiguous title, Hold Down the Bayou. 
Since then, it has grown up and been transformed into something rather special. Before playing it, I'd like to introduce the young man who wrote it, Danny O'Neill. Go on. Okay, it's all yours. Looks like I'm going to have to hire you after all. Thanks, Artie. But only because I don't want to lose a good secretary. That's good. That's perfect. <laughs> 